Chapter 10 focuses on drugs and delinquency. The use and abuse of drugs in society is not a new phenomenon. Indeed, the extent of drug use among humans can be traced to almost all civilizations during every period of time. It is not surprising that most individuals first come into contact with drugs during the high risk and high experimentation years associated with adolescence. A drug can be defined as a chemical that interacts with the body and alters basic body functioning, usually through the central nervous cord and system. The drugs most commonly associated with abuse are classified as opiates, stimulants, depressants, hallucinogens, and marijuana. However, there are thousands of substances that are capable of altering human perception and behavior. So we're going to take a look at the specific drugs used by adolescents. And we're going to start with marijuana. Marijuana is the drug most commonly used by teens. It is produced from the leaves of cannabis estiva and hashish is the concentrated form of cannabis made of unadulterated resin from the female plant. The main ingredient in both is THC, and I am not going to say the actual fancy word. I have never said it in court, and it's kind of funny to hear the judges try and say it. I usually have to consult a medical professional. So THC, we all know what that is. Uh, it's a mild hallucinogen, most commonly used, like I said, uh, by, uh, by teenagers, the most common drug used by uh, teenagers. Large amounts causes distortion that produce hallucinatory uh, type effects. It's not physically addictive, but there are long-term effects that can be debated. And there's a lot of research on that. Um, and still more is being done, especially using it in uh, the medical sense. But like other drugs, Marijuana can be altered. These alter, uh, alterations, um, some of the names, at the general term, I guess, is spice that we use uh, for alterations to marijuana. Uh, that's the general term, but there's other names that are on the market. The Black Mamba, Bliss, Fake Weed, Genie, K2. Spice is a mix of herbs or shredded plant material in laboratory made chemicals with mild altering effects. It is often called synthetic marijuana or fake weed because some of the chemicals in it are similar to ones in marijuana, but its effects are sometimes very different from marijuana and often much stronger. Usually the chemicals are sprayed onto plant materials to make them look like marijuana. Because the chemicals used in spice have a high potential for abuse and no medical benefit. The Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, has made many of the active chemicals found in spice illegal. Some states have legalized small amounts uh, of marijuana for rec adult recreation use. Not to New York. There's, uh, there have been some changes to the laws involving marijuana in New York in 2019, which basically lowered the penalties for the um, possession and sale of marijuana. Uh, and it also, the law, new law also allowed for expunging uh, criminal convictions from records that involved marijuana possession. But it is still illegal to possess, grow, and sell marijuana in the state of New York. However, New York is one of the states that have passed it for medical use, mar medical marijuana. So, as on cocaine, uh, alkaloid derived from the coca plant, most powerful natural stimulant that produces euphoria, restlessness, and excitement. It's generally sniffed, snorted, or injected. And there's this immediate feeling or rush that is short-lived, but cocaine is another uh, drug that teenagers use. Crack is the other one, or another one. It's also known as rock or gravel or rock sand, number of different street names. It's uh, 
processed street cocaine. It is generally ingested by smoking it. It gained popularity in the mid 80s. It's relatively inexpensive and can provide a powerful high and is highly addictive. Uh, There are very heavy penalties under the law for possessing and selling uh, crack. And there's a lot of reasons why that is outside the scope of this class versus cocaine. There's still laws regarding possessing cocaine and penalties, but not as severe as crack. Heroin is a drug, and this is the most common used drug in the United States amongst everybody, not just teenagers. And it's also the most dangerous commonly abused drug. It's made from opium and the and it's cut with sugar or some other neutral substance until it is 1% to 4% uh, pure. You may have heard sometimes these heroin gets laced with other types of drugs like fentanyl, which can be extremely deadly. Uh, it's highly addictive. Users build up a quick tolerance, hence they want more, they need more. It's usually started by snorting it and injecting it. It is a narcotic drug, meaning that it dulls senses, relieves pain. Users feel a release of tension and elevated spirits. Uh, spirits. It's short experienced, and then there's drowsiness. The controversy over the DEA's classifying of marijuana as a Schedule One drug, which is the highest category, uh, also found in that same category is heroin, which is highly addictive and, and what what category one means is that the drug is highly addictive and no and has no medical purpose. Um, and that controversy is out there uh, as a result of many people promoting the legalization of marijuana and why is it classified so uh, high. But that's a discussion for another class. I think I actually had it in criminology, not to promote criminology. Another drug. Uh, teens use is alcohol and it is generally the drug of choice for most teenagers 60 percent of high school seniors reported abusing it in the past year 66 percent say they've tried it by 12th grade 50 percent have reported that they have been drunk excessive alcohol use has uh, negative impacts on well the, the health of individuals but society as a whole Alcohol is the factor in nearly half of all murders, suicides, and accidental deaths. 1.2 million drivers are arrested each year for driving while under the influence, and 6,000 of those are underage. And I will say the penalties for underage DWI are are a lot harsher than somebody who is old enough to be drinking. Um... So there there are a lot of repercussions to an underage drinker, uh, one who drinks and then drives. 800,000 more people are arrested for alcohol-related offenses. And the cost, the economic cost to society is crazy. $185 billion each year in loss of, you know, related to insurance costs and related to out of work costs and you know those type of uh that the cost of out of pocket to have to pay for something like this court costs staggering huge amount so why do many youths drink in excess excess drinking is a problem some claim a number of some teens youths claim a number of benefits, such as a reduction in tension, enhances pleasure, improves social skills, as well as as stirs up romantic urges. But this may be the result of inexperience or just limited use. Research shows the opposite effect when alcohol is used in excess. Long-term use is linked to depression and physical ailments, ranging from heart disease to uh, cirrhosis of the liver. So the perceived benefits versus the real long-term effects. Other drug categories, we got a bunch more. Anesthetic drugs, 
central nervous system depressants, most widely abused is PCP, or otherwise known as angel dust, usually sprayed on marijuana and smoked or injected. It was developed as an animal tranquilizer, causes hallucinations, and can cause a heavy user of PCP to engage in violent acts. One example is the case of Big Lurch, a former rapper with a history of violent crime, who was convicted of murdering and cannibalizing his roommate while under the influence of PCP. Other commonly cited types of incidences including inflicting property damage and self-mutilation of various types, such as pulling one's own teeth out. These effects were not noted in its uh, medicinal use in the 1950s and 1960s. However, uh, reports of physical violence on PCP have often been shown, but were deemed unfounded. Uh, recreational doses of the drug also occasionally appear to induce a psychotic state that resembles a uh, schizophrenic type episode. Users generally report feeling detached from reality. In surveys, the number of high school students admitting to trying PCP at least once fell from 13% in 1979 to less than 3% in the 1990s, so that's good. Inhalants is another drug. Inhaling vapors from lighter fluid, shoe polish, paint thinner, cleaning fluid, airplane glue. Um, I represented a 16-year-old who um, almost killed himself trying to inhale uh, the nitrous oxi uh, oxide from the whipped cream chargers. Those whipped cream chargers, they have the steel cylinders. They're filled with uh, nitrous oxide, and it's used as the uh, whipping agent in the whipped cream can dispensers. By dispensing the nitrous oxide into a balloon and then inhaling it, the canisters can be used to achieve a, a high. And it's commonly known as laughing gas. It is a non-flammable colorless gas compound with nitrogen and oxygen. Other common uses for it is rocket propellants and motor racing. Some youths inhale vapors that cause a euphoric feeling that is followed by disorientation, slurred speech, and drowsiness. Sedatives, barbiturates, downers is their street name, or sometimes they're identified by their colors. There's blue and there's red. Um, depresses the central nervous system, creating a sleep-like condition. These are the major, uh, barbiturates are the major cause of drug overdose deaths. Tranquilizers reduce anxiety, promote relaxation, overuse can lead to addiction, and withdrawal can be painful and hazardous. Uh, hallucinogens, another type of drug, could be natural, could be synthetic, I mean it's made or mixed with something. Provides vivid distortions of the senses without greatly disturbing the viewer's consciousness, LSD. It's a common one. That's a synthetic one. Stint uh, stimulants, uppers, speed, pet pills, crystal. Synthetic drugs that increase blood pressure, breathing rate, bodily activity, and elevate mood. Uh, methadrine is the most widely used dangerous amphetamine. Another example of it is meth speed, crystal meth. Methamphetamine is powerful. Uh, this is uh, an important one used by uh, teens. Meth is a powerful, highly addictive stimulant that affects the central nervous system. We know it's also gone by meth, blue, ice, crystal. Among many of the other terms, it takes the form of a white, odorless, bitter-tasting crystal-like powder, crystalline-like powder that easily dissolves in water or alcohol. Methamphetamine was developed early in the 20th century from its parent drug, amphetamine, and was used in nasal congestants and inhalers. Like amphetamine, methamphetamine causes increased activity and talkativeness, decreased appetite, and a pleasurable sense of well-being or euphoria. However, methamphetamine differs from amphetamine in that at comparable doses, much greater amounts of the drug get into the brain, making it more making it a more potent stimulant. It also has longer lasting and more harmful effects on the central nervous system. 
And these characteristics make it a drug with high potential for widespread misuse. And certainly it has been misuse. Methamphetamine has been classified by the U.S. DEA as a Schedule II stimulant, which may, makes it illegal. Well, which makes it legally available only through a non-refillable prescription. That's why it's not a Category 1, because it has some medical use. Uh, meth is easily produced, mom pa labs throughout the country, making it with household products that are readily available and hard to regulate, or they can't be regulated, uh, and that produces the danger. Some states have banned the over-counter medications that contain the essential ingredient for meth or require a prescription or have limited amounts of uh, purchases uh, per time frame, like within the 30-day time frame. The economic cost of meth use in the United States exceeds $23 billion a year. Meth is a big problem. Steroids. Uh, Antibiotic steroids are used to gain muscle bulk and strength. Teens who, the ones who desire academic success, use them. Uh, black market sales approach $1 billion annually. There's, they are not physically addicting, but they can cause health problems such as liver ailments, tumors, kidney problems, sexual dysfunctions, hypertension, and depression. We have designer drugs. Some designer drugs are synthetically created in labs for the purpose of temporarily circumventing existing drug laws. For example, bath salts. Every time there's a new synthetic drug, the DEA has to research it and figure it out and then add it to the, the schedule, the drug schedule. Ecstasy, another designer drug, acts simultaneously as a stimulant and a hallucinogen. It's derived from speed and meth. Ecstasy can be snorted, swallowed, smoked, or injected. It has lots of negative effects, produces mood swings, altering thinking, interfering with sexual function, increase blood pressure. And before we move on, we should also discuss cigarettes, tobacco products. Laws around the country prohibit the sale of cigarettes to minors. Uh, most states restricting the sales to 18 years uh, old. New York last November, November 2019, passed a law rising the age for cigarettes and e-cigarettes to minors to 20 years old. In the early 2000s, cigarette use by teens was on the decline, but at that point it was notable that they had access to e-cigarettes, and then states have been implementing laws regulating e-cigarettes. Looking at the future, is the war on drugs working? The motivation behind the war on drugs is the belief that reducing drug use in sales will have a major impact on other types of delinquency. Annual survey of teen drug abuse is carried out by the Institute of Social Research at the University of Michigan. And according to the survey, drug use among American adolescents declined since its peak in 1996 and 1997. There was a significant drop in alcohol use by the youngest kids, the eighth graders that were surveyed. Decline in cigarette smoking and smokeless tobacco use. Uh, another study conducted seemed to support those findings from the MTF, the PRIDE survey, Parents Research Institute from Drug Education. They found that from 2009 to 2010, school year, uh, that school year experienced small to moderate reductions in drug activities. But over the last 10 years, they saw a substantial decrease that occurred among the various age groups between, um, the, the age groups were from eighth grade to 12th grade. National Survey on Drug Use and Health, sponsored by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, uh, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, um, indicates that drug and alcohol use has stabilized or decreased or declined, either stabilized or declined among adolescents between the years of 2009 and 2013. And while on the decline, there was, there's still a problem, especially with heavy drinking. Heavy drinking reported by, was reported by 7% of youth, 12 and over, that's 17 million people. 
2% of youth age 12 through 17 were heavy drinkers and 8% engaged in binge drinking. And binge drinking per the survey was defined as five or more alcoholic drinks on one occasion in the past 30 days. So drinking is still a problem. Marijuana use is currently more common among male use than female use, but that's the, the gap is closing. So then the question is, are the results accurate? Are the results accurate? Data must be interpreted cautiously for a lot of reasons. Uh, we discussed these early on in the early chapters when we discussed self-reporting surveys, because that's what these are. These are self-reporting surveys uh, that are done in schools. Uh, heavy users are not expected to fully cooperate. Drug abusing students are more likely to be absent from school during testing periods. Drug abusers are more likely to be forgetful, not knowing what they've used or, you know, whether they've used something that's on the list. Most drug dependent uh, portion of the adolescent population is omitted from this sample because they've either, you know, dropped out or they were arrested and are being detained. So they're not at the school when these surveys are being conducted. The survey also includes younger children, eighth graders, and that might get around the dropout uh, problem by tapping into the younger children, um, but not including those high schoolers that dropped out or are detained is excluding most of the drug prone people from the survey population. You also have to look at the accuracy of reporting that may be affected by social or and or personal traits. Like girls and children from single parent homes are less likely to admit taking drugs. Girls overall are more apt to admit to taking drugs than boys. And then there's some who just won't be honest. Yeah. So a quick recap of these, these points. Uh, more than half of all high school age kids have tried drugs. Of these drugs, the most commonly used for teens is marijuana. Use of cocaine and crack is on the de uh, decline. Alcohol remains the jug of choice for most teens. Ecstasy has become popular in recent years. Teenage drug use is measured by two national surveys, the ones we just went over, uh, the Monitoring the Future Survey and the Pride Survey. And both of these surveys show that drug and alcohol use has declined in recent years. However, still remains uh, a problem with the youths. So the why do you think youths take drugs? That's the question we're going to answer next. <laughs>